The following is transcribed. Welcome to Bat Soup, the never nutritious, definitely delicious podcast dedicated to the old time radio adventures of Superman and the dynamic duo. Buckle your utility belts for lots of gleeps, plenty of clarification seeking, and lack of alone time galore. Before we get to today's adventure, let's pause for this important message. When you make your voice heard, fellows and girls, we at Fat Soup listen. We know that a whole bunch of you are having a humdinger of a time collecting those lids from cans of never nutritious, definitely delicious bat soup, and your efforts will be rewarded. But for some of you, well, it seems things aren't going quite so well. We've gotten your cards and letters and appreciate how hard you're trying to get those can lids saved up for what'll be a really swell reward. And we also want to say, how sorry we are for all the cuts and bleeding you've ended up with trying to get those lids off. But don't you worry. We've already got an idea to help remedy that problem, and it's on the way to the stores right now. Heck, not even the Border Patrol will take any issues with this one. Meanwhile, let's be careful out there and take it slow when you're getting those lids together. And whatever you do, uh, maybe wear some gloves when you're opening those cans. And when you're storing your canned lids, uh, maybe wrap them in some cloth so the edges aren't exposed. Safety always comes first with Bat Soup, gang. Bat Soup, available wherever fine podcasts are sold. Always keep your tetanus shots up to date. And now, Bat Soup presents today's adventure. Part 3 of The Story of the Century, as originally broadcast on April 3rd, 1946. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look! Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman, strange visitor from another planet, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, defender of law and order, champion of equal rights, valiant, courageous fighter against the forces of hate and prejudice. Today, the mystery surrounding the story of the century has Clark Kent completely baffled. We'll join him in a moment as he tries to untangle the threads. But right now, let's join another friend, Dan McCullough. You know, uh, when you wake up in the morning and see the good golden sunshine streaming through your window, well, you've got a head start on a happy day right then and there. And when you come to the breakfast table and see your heaping bowl full of sunny golden toasted Kellogg's Pep, why, you're pretty sure to feel even more cheerful because Pep tastes a doggone good. It's crisp and tender and full of that wide-awake flavor, not to mention the good whole-grain nutrition in every serving, plus more than twice as much vitamin D1 as in sun-ripened whole wheat, plus your whole daily minimum need of sunshine vitamin D, plus the exciting prizes in every package of Kellogg's Pep. Yes, sir, comic buttons, a brand-new second series of true-to-life pictures of your favorite funny paper characters. Boy, what a load of fun it is to collect the whole second series and trade duplicates with your pals. And how easy these comic buttons are to get. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to make sure Mom gets you some of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And there's your prize inside the package. Remember, that's P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now... The Adventures of Superman. At the moment, Clark Kent feels as if he were on a merry-go-round as he attempts to solve the most baffling mystery of his entire career. The latest incredible development was the sudden appearance of Lois Lane in Kent's office at the Daily Planet hardly a second after she had finished speaking to him on the telephone, presumably from the other end of Metropolis. As we continue now, determined to get an answer to the amazing enigma... Kent, after warning Jimmy Olsen not to say a word, begins questioning Lois. Now, let's take one thing at a time, Lois. First, who smashed up your apartment last night? 
Who what? Who overturned the furniture, smashed the lamps, and pulled out all the drawers? I don't know what you're talking about, what? Clark. Please. All right, all right, all right. Where were you last night? With my sister, Diane. You were not? I was, too. I called your sister's apartment. Nobody answered. I'm sorry, but I spent the entire night with Diana. She's sick, and neither one of us budged. Please. Okay, okay, let that go. Now, about the $10,000, the second $10,000. What? Didn't I just talk to you on the phone, and didn't you tell me to get the money down to 407 Clover Street, Mrs. Walsh's rooming house, immediately? Clark, are you crazy? Answer my question. Who's Mrs. Walsh? Gleeps. Oh, stop saying Gleeps, Jim. But, but, but Gleeps, she just said... I know what she said. Keep quiet, please. I'm going to get to the bottom of this if it's the last thing I do. Now, look, Lois. Let's go back a step. To the first $10,000. What I... first $10,000? That you phoned for earlier this morning, a couple of hours ago. I phoned for $10,000? Well, you know you did. You said you were working on a terrific story and you needed $10,000 in cash immediately. Why, of all the... Clark, have you gone cra- What's come over you? I mean, you... You didn't call? Not even the first time? I didn't call the first time or the second time or any other time and ask for $10,000. As a matter of fact, I haven't used a telephone since I left the office yesterday. I've been taking care of Diana. Gleeps. Oh, will you please tell me what this is all about, Clark? Well, I'm beginning to get a vague idea, but it doesn't add up. Apparently, someone impersonated you, too. What do you mean, me, too? Well, someone impersonated the chief last night. What? Yes, last night about 10 o'clock, I got a phone call. I was sure it was White. Same voice, inflections, everything. He told me to pick you up at your apartment, come to his house at once. He said something big was going on and dangerous, and he warned me to be very careful. Yes? Well, I got my car and drove to your place. When you didn't answer the switchboard phone, the doorman and I went up to your apartment. The door was unlocked. And the place looked as if a cyclone had struck it. The rug was heaped up, the furniture overturned, all the drawers pulled out. Good heavens, I thought you were joking about the apartment. Listen, that apartment's no joke, it's a mess. What was stolen? Oh, nothing. As far as I could see, all your clothes were there, your jewelry hadn't been touched, nothing oh. seemed to be missing. I don't understand no, it. Oh, neither do we. Well, I can't explain why they made a wreck of your apartment, Lois, but I think I know why someone impersonated your voice. Why? To swindle the Daily Planet out of $10,000. I mean, $20,000. They... Great Scott. What is it, Clark? The chief. He took $10,000 in cash to that rooming house this morning when he thought it was you who phoned for it. The crooks must have been waiting for him. Leaping on his heavens. Either they forced him to call me a little while ago and demand another 10000 or whoever impersonated him last night called. Either way, he's in trouble. I've got to get down there at once. I'll call you as soon as I can. Wait a minute, I'm going with you. Yeah, oh, me too. Going. I can get there faster alone. Don't be ridiculous. A taxi can carry two passengers as quickly as one. They can carry three, too. Well, You're not I... telling me anything, Clark. I'm going with you, and that is that. Oh, well, all right, all right, come along. No, no, not you, Jim. But I... Someone has to stay here in case we have to call in. Oh, gee whiz. Come on, Lois. Hey, wait, your phone's ringing. Take the message. I can't wait. Okay. Hello? James Olson speaking. This is Murray White, Jim. Is Kent there? Oh, Mr. Kent, come back. It's Mr. White. Who? Mr. White, the chief. Thanks, Tim. Close the door, Lois. Uh, wake up, Olson. I want Kent. Is he here? He's right here, Chief. I mean, Mr. White. Uh, listen, are you are you okay? Oh, of course I'm okay. Stop wasting time and put Kent well, Give me the phone, Jim. Give it to me. Clark, wait a minute. It, it, it might not be the chief. It, it Just might leave be. leave it to me, Lois. Leave it to me. Uh, hello, Chief. Kent, what in tarnation told you? Why haven't you brought the money down here? Uh, I was delayed. The, the, the cashier wouldn't issue a draft without an order from you. I called that blithering idiot Darwin a half hour ago and told him to draw the money from the bank and give it to you. You mean to say he hasn't done a check? Well, it, it, it takes quite a while to get to the bank and back. How long does it take? Confound it, I've got hold of the story of the century. Of the century, do you hear me? And if that annotated Darwin makes me lose oh, it... Oh, here he is now. Uh, come in and close the door, Darwin. Uh, yes, Mr. Gannon. Has he got the money? Uh, just a moment. Uh, did, did you get the money, Darwin? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's got it. Good. Grab a cab and rush it down here at once. At once, do you hear? Right. Uh, are you still at 407 Clover Street? Yes, Mrs. Walsh's rooming house. Is Lois with you? Never mind about Lois. You just get that money here and don't lose a second. Goodbye. Uh, was it... Was it Perry White, Clark? I don't know. Sounded like him. But so did the man who impersonated him last night. We'd better call Inspector Henderson. No, 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 no. Not yet, not yet. I'll go down there first. You stay here, Lois. I will I'll... not, and that's fine. All right, all right, then come along. But but hurry, will you? Uh, just a moment, Mr. Kent. You're forgetting the money. I changed my mind, Darwin. I don't want it. Uh, but I just went to the bank, and Mr. White Put said... it back in the bank. Come on, Lois. Step on it. Oh, no, sir. 
7 Clover Street. That'll be a dollar sixty. All right, here you are, driver. Keep the change. Come on, Lois. Much obliged, Mac. Okay. Is this the place, Clark? Yes, this is the place. I... Uh-oh. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Something's wrong. Wrong? Yes. Something's very wrong. I, I can't figure this out. Startled, Clark Kent stares at the shingled house, his X-ray vision perceiving something which Lois Lane cannot see. We'll return in a moment for the exciting climax of today's episode. But first, here again is your announcer. Say, my pal Rusty ran past me like a streak of lightning this afternoon. You know, I thought maybe he was going to a fire or something, so I yelled, Hey, hey, Rusty, what's up? Well, he skidded to a stop just long enough to tell me that he was on his way over to Pee Wee's to trade a Jigs comic button he just got for Pee Wee's duplicate Popeye button. How about that? Yes, sir, Rusty was sure in a big rush to get that Popeye button to add to his collection. You know, that's one of the brand new second series comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. And all the kids are mighty busy these days starting their collection of all 18 of these buttons in the new second series. Each one has a true-to-life picture of one of your favorite funny sheet characters. Each one is brilliant with full comic strip colors. Mighty smart looking when you pin them on your jacket or your dress or cap. And are these new comic buttons easy to get? You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. All you do is to ask Mom to get you plenty of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. And look for your prize inside every package. There's a comic button, a prize for you in every package of P-E-P, Pep, the sunshine cereal made by Kellogg, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. As Clark Kent and Lois Lane left the taxi in front of 407 Clover Street, Kent, making use of Superman's X-ray vision, suddenly stopped and stared at the shingled house. Now, a puzzled frown clouding his face... He has mounted the few steps to the door, followed by Lois. Clark, what is it? What's the matter? This... this house. What about the house? Well, when I was here earlier this morning, there were dingy curtains in the windows and a... and a hand-lettered sign, rooms for rent. Yes? Well, now there are Venetian blinds on the windows and... And the room's for rent sign is gone. Oh, so what? They might have just put the blinds up. And empty rooms don't stay empty long these days. Oh, but this brass plate on the door, it says, John Simmons, teacher of piano. It wasn't here before. Well, maybe he just moved in. Oh, there's something else. Wait a minute, I'll ring the bell. Yeah, look, do you think we're being very smart? I mean, what if the crooks are waiting in there for us? someone. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Is uh, is Mrs. Walsh in? I beg your pardon? Mrs. Walsh, the, the, the landlady of this rooming house. I'm afraid you've made a mistake, young man. This is a private residence. Well, private residence? And a piano studio. I'm John Simmons. But I... Just a moment, Lois. Isn't this 407 Clover Street? Yes. And... And this isn't a theatrical rooming house? My dear young man, I've just told you it isn't. But... But I was here less than two hours ago. Well, you couldn't have been here, Clark. I tell Clark. you, I was. Uh, look, do you mind if we come in for a moment, Mr. Simmons? There's something very strange about this. I... Not at all. Come right in. Thank you. My studio is to the right. Just a moment, Mr. Simmons. This this reception room. What, what happened to the wallpaper? What wallpaper? When I was here earlier today, there was paper on the walls. Faded paper with big blue flowers on it. Oh, Clark. My dear young man. There was, I tell you. And there were autographed pictures of old-time theatrical stars on the walls. And the furniture was broken down wicker stuff. This this modern furniture wasn't here at all. I assure you, young man, you're mistaken. I tell you, I'm not. I've occupied this house for 18 years. Look, there was I... never paper or theatrical photographs on my walls. I saw them. There I... was never any broken down wicker furniture in my reception room. And this has never been a rooming house. But there was a... Is that quite clear? I... Yeah, yeah, yes. It, it, it's clear, but I... I don't understand it. Bewildered, Clark Kent was the kindly middle-aged music teacher, and then at the neat orderly reception room. A room in which he is sure less than two hours ago stood a woman who called herself Mrs. Walsh and who spouted quotations from Shakespeare. 
A room with dingy wallpaper and broken down furniture and faded theatrical photographs. What can this mean? What can all of this amazing riddle of impersonators and mysteriously wrecked apartments and false leads mean? Well, fellas and girls, see if you can guess the answer to the mystery which is even baffling Superman. And be sure to listen tomorrow and every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, to The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow The Adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. Say, if you want your dog to tag right along with the gang, if you want him to be strong and husky, don't let him eat just to fill up. Mix his scraps of meat and fat in with Grow Pup Dog Food. You see, Kellogg's Grow Pup has what it takes to help keep a dog hitting on all fours. And it's full of swell, meaty flavor that most dogs like. Besides, there are three different kinds of Grow Pup. Grow Pup Ribbon, Grow Pup Meal, and Grow Pup Pellets. Ask Mother to start feeding your dog Kellogg's Grow Pup today. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. That was part three of The Story of the Century from The Adventures of Superman. As always, thanks for listening and for your continued support. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Bat Soup wherever you get your podcasts. You can also like us and reach out on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube. Bat Soup is now a proud member of the Moonlight Audio Theater family of podcasts. Visit them at moonlightaudio.libsyn.com. That'll wrap things up for this episode of Bat Soup, but be sure to tune in next time when you'll hear Lois Lane say... Really, once he gets an idea in his head, Mr. Simmons, there's just no budging him. Before the next exciting scenes of our adventure, please permit us to pause for a meeting of the Law and Order Roundtable, conducted by the Green Hornet. Good evening, friend. If you are between the ages of 15 and 21, please stop, think, and listen. Because this message is intended especially for you. Undoubtedly, most of you are preparing yourselves now for the job of tomorrow. That's great. Keep up the good work. But along with preparing yourself for your chosen trade or profession, don't neglect to groom yourself for the job of good citizenship as well. Young Americans, America's hope for the future is in your hands. And that's why it's vitally important that you be well-equipped to practice good citizenship, which, in the final analysis, is the foundation of good government. Incidentally, good government will not tolerate crooked politicians and dishonest officials. Consequently, racket cannot thrive or even exist. Boys and girls, learn all you can now about how your government works. Find out what makes it tick and why. Make it a habit to study both sides of every important political issue. And in addition, study the records of candidates who seek to run your government, locally or nationally. Vote for the candidate who is best qualified by education and experience, who has the best record for honesty, sincerity, and accomplishment. 